Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can finish a design in Illustrator by adding some fun and interesting light effects. Before we begin this tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're going to be creating. What I have got here is a neon sign that I created for another video tutorial. But let's have a look and see what it is that we'll be creating for this tutorial. What we're going to do is add some dimensional light effects to this image. I'm going to show you these now in place. There's some little stars as well as a sort of glossy look that's being given to this swash. And I'm going to show you how you can achieve those looks. For this tutorial, we're going to work on our neon light or neon signage that we created in an earlier video tutorial. I'm going to start out by showing you how to add those little glow effects to the neon sign. And we're going to do that using the pencil tool. So I'm going to target the pencil tool and I'm just going to draw a sort of wiggly line. So you can do this with your mouse because it's not rocket science at all. What you want is a line that looks something like that. And you can smooth it out if you need to using the smooth tool. But it doesn't really matter because you're not going to actually see this line later on. You're just going to see the effect that it gives. So with this pencil line now targeted, we're going to create the look that we want. The starting point is to make sure that we have white as our stroke and we have no fill at all. I'm going to use the width tool here. It shares a toolbar position with all these other line and shape altering tools, but we want the width one. And I'm just going to drag over here, just click and drag to make the line a different size. And if I move the shape over my actual neon sign, you'll see what it is that we're doing here. Again, I'm targeting the width tool and I'm just going to drag on the shape a little bit. What I want to do is to just alter the shape a little. Having done that, you'll see that we've got this line. This is what the line is that is on our shape. And you can see that it's at the moment 16 pixels or 16 points wide or high. I'm going to decrease that. I want it to be around about five. So we've got this sort of varying width line. Now we're going to add a Gaussian blur to it. So I'm going to make sure that I'm working on the line itself. So I'm just going to target the stroke because I don't want to add a Gaussian blur to the fill because there is no fill. I'm going to choose Effect and then Blur and then Gaussian Blur. I'm going to turn my preview on. You can see that as soon as I turned my preview on, in fact, the stroke has pretty much disappeared. It's just now a light blur. So I'm going to increase the blur amount. You'll see that increasing the blur a lot actually removes the stroke totally. Decreasing it makes the line a lot sort of more distinct. And you want a point at which you're getting just a nice little highlight blur. And that will depend on your particular line. But I think sort of 14 or 15 is probably a good value. So I'm just going to click OK. So this is pretty much the lightning effect that I'm using. I'm just going to target the Move tool and let's just move it into position. And what it does is it adds a sort of dimension effect to the underlying shape. And we can move it so we can reshape it if we want to and we can rotate it. But what you're looking for is not to actually be able to see this shape per se, but just the effect that it's having on the underlying element. So now that we've created one of them, I can hold the Alt or Option key and drag a second version away. And I can use that to highlight over here. And I'll do the same, another Alt or Option, and I'll drag another one over here. And I might rotate this around to put the thicker end over this edge of my shape. Just don't think that I want it to look quite as much like a shape. I just don't really want to see the shape. I just want to see 
the effect that it's having on the neon sign. And now let's have a look at the elements that I was adding also to the text. Now we haven't created the text yet, so I'm just going to go and turn on this text layer that I have for this other shape. So I actually have a text layer that I can borrow. I'm just going to turn everything else off right now. Let's go and get this text and I'm just going to duplicate it so I can keep one with my original shape and one for this new one. Let's drag it up into position and let's turn everything back on. Now I'm thinking that this is probably a little bit too big so let's just size it down. Now what I wanted to do with this neon was to add a few little stars and we're actually going to do this using a star. So I'm going to press the letter D to reset these colors here and let's go and get the star tool. And I'm going to draw with white fill and a black stroke just right now so that we can create this star shape. Now I just want a tiny, tiny star and it looks like Illustrator is going to give me a fairly big one. No, something like that will be perfect. Let's just click away so we can see what it looks like. Now for this particular star, I want to have no stroke at all. So I'm going to turn off the stroke and I want a white fill. And now we're going to add some glows to this so that it is not just a star, but so it has some interest in it. For this I'm going to target the fill layer because that's what I want to add this effect to. And I'm going to start with effect and I'm going to choose an outer glow. So I'm going to choose stylize outer glow. And I'm going to set this one to overlay blend mode. And I want a, well, Looks like I've done it again and I haven't selected my shape first of all. So let's make sure that we have the shape selected. And now let's go to Effect Stylize Outer Glow and try that again. We can preview it. I want an overlay blend mode and I want it to be around 75% and I want a slightly smaller blur. So I want that to be about 20, 19 to 20 point blur and click OK. And now let's add a second outer glow, effect stylize outer glow. And this time we want to apply a new effect. This time we want it to be screen blend mode. Again, I'm going to set the opacity this time to about 70%. And this time I want the blur to be a little bit larger. I want it to be 27 points or so. And let's just preview it. And you can see that this is giving us a lightning effect and I'll click OK. This is one of the outer glows and this is the second outer glow. And you can see that the element needs both to work. Neither of these can operate independently of each other. The two glows are being used to create the overall effect. Now I can size my shape down if I want to and make it even smaller. But there is my little glow effect and see what happens when I put it on top of my text. It's actually adding quite a lightning effect to the text and if it's too much of an effect, all we'll do is target this shape and drop down the opacity, perhaps to say something like 70% and that will make it still effective in lightening the element but not quite as light as it had been. And again, we can just Alt or Option drag on this shape to create multiple shapes to add lightning effects around the element. So you can continue to just grab these and just place them wherever you want them to be. You might just add one over here. But you can click and drag to select them and just move them wherever you want them on your shape. 
but that's how you can create a lot more visual interest in Illustrator. You'll find that these little stars and these little swirls actually add some dimension to your object. So let's just turn them off. That's it without them. And this is the shape with those elements added to it. And you can see that it gives it just a slightly more finished look. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Illustrator, Lightroom and a whole lot more.